Hey everyone, welcome back to uh, Pittman EC Church and our Wednesday devotional. Now traditionally I'm trying to release videos out to you um, every Sunday as a live stream and something on a Wednesday or near Wednesday to uh, encourage you. And many of the videos that I've been doing are specifically towards adults. So I want to do this video specifically towards children and especially your littlest ones. Um, being a father and uh, working at Good News Clubs many times and, and working with the youngest ones and even my youth pastor background, you question many times, and I'm sure you've done this too, you question many times, how much do your children honestly know about the gospel? Uh, how much do they really comprehend? You know, this brings up issues of the age of accountability and all sorts of theological thoughts about that. But the end result becomes this, we worry about our kids. We worry about the youngest ones that we know, whether they know Christ truly or not, if they're saved or not. And, and Jesus is the one that, of course, knows the heart. Jesus is the one that knows that this person is truly saved. But what we can know is this. We can know a good idea of their comprehension level with the gospel message. And so what I want to present to you today is a tool a tool that I hope that you use for the glory of God and for the youngest of children um, that you want to present the gospel to. Because what happens to a lot of individuals that I listen to is they're afraid to give the gospel or they're afraid they're going to leave something out or maybe not explain it well. So what I'm going to do for you in video fashion through a highly um, visual PowerPoint presentation is to present the gospel message to your youngest ones that you will sit on your lap. See how I envision this is you put that youngest individual on your lap, you both watch the screen together, and the gospel message will be presented in a very visual, attractive form for the littlest ones. And then, this is the neat part, you'll now know their comprehension. Because the second time through the video, it's going to be silent. And all you're going to have are the visual prompts on your screen. And your idea as a parent, guardian, grandparent, whatever might be the situation, is for you to ask the child that you're sitting with, what does that mean? What does that mean on your screen? What's happening now in the story? So the first time explains the story. The second time the child is to explain the story back to you. And then you can have a good idea of their comprehension level. And the cool thing is, you can go through this gospel message as many times as you need to. Now, I know, especially me, I know that I am not perfect. So if you have any suggestions on how to make this message better, cleaner, um, easier to understand for the littlest ones that we have, um, please leave it down in the comment section down below, and I will prayerfully consider it. My hope is that this message does go viral. I'll be honest with you, I hope that this message goes out there, that other churches can use this as an amazing tool to help bring people to Jesus Christ. So let me pray right now for that little one that you might have on your lap right now. So let's pray. Lord God, I just pray for this little one that's sitting on the lap right now that's about to hear the gospel message. Lord God, I pray that they hear it loud and clear. I pray that the comprehension level is at a level that they can understand, that distractions are taken away. And uh, Lord, we know it's only by the power of your Spirit, so we pray that your Holy Spirit calls and draws. Uh, Lord, may this be used for your glory. In Jesus Christ's precious name, amen. All right, at this point, you can sit down and just watch the video through to get a feel for what it's all about, or you can sit that little one down, and let's go through part one of the video. It'll be explaining it to you. Part two, your child explains it back. All right, here we go. Pay attention to your screen. A very long, long time ago, nothing was around. The sky wasn't here, the earth wasn't here, not even the stars. You weren't even here. There was nothing. But in that nothing, God was always there. God is known as the maker of all things. This means that he is so powerful that when God speaks, things instantly appear. And because God made everything, he also made the rules for everything. God made two very important places that you need to know about. One place was called heaven. Heaven is a very happy place, and it's where God lives. God made a very special rule about heaven. In heaven, no bad things are allowed to enter. These bad things are called sin. Sin is not allowed to come into heaven. Only goodness and happiness 
may come inside. Heaven was created for those who listen and obey God. Another place that God made was hell. Hell is a very bad place. This is where bad things go. This is where sin goes. God created this place for those who don't listen and don't obey him. So God created heaven and God also created hell. Remember, sin and bad stuff goes to hell, but sin cannot get into heaven because God will not allow it and he makes the rules. God is so powerful and so amazing that when he spoke, the earth appeared. Just by the power of his awesome words, he created water and lands and tree and sky and every animal and bird that you see today. Through his great word, he also made the blazing sun that you see outside. And not only in the blazing sun, but the glowing moon and the stars that you see at night. But out of everything that God ever made, he saved the best for last. God made you. You were very special to him. You see, God made everything for you to enjoy. When you look at the stars, God made them for you to remember him. When you see a beautiful sunset, God made that just for you. God loves you very much, and he wants you to be happy. God allows all people, including you, to have choices. We can choose to do no sin, to do no bad stuff, and that makes God happy. Or we can choose to sin, doing bad things, and that makes God mad, and it makes God sad. Now remember, no sin is allowed in heaven with God. No sin. God only wants good things to be up there. He only wants good people to come inside of his home. But bad things, sin, Sin will end up in hell. This is where God places bad people, people that don't listen to him, people who do bad things. In the Bible, God's written word, God calls this place death. This means people who get stuck here can never get to heaven above, and it makes God extremely sad. Sin causes people to go here and become stuck here, so sin is the problem. So the big question becomes, what is sin then? Well, let me give you some examples. Sin is lying when you're not telling the truth. Sin is stealing when you take something that is not yours. Sin is not listening to mom or dad when they tell you to do something. Sin is the bad stuff that you do. Let me ask you a question. Do you do bad things? Do you sin? Did you ever hit someone or become angry and maybe at your brother or your sister? Did you ever take some candy, money, food, or a game that wasn't yours? Did you ever get a time out, a spanking, or get yelled at by mom and dad? That probably means you've probably done something wrong. And it means you most likely sinned or done some bad stuff to get you into trouble. See, there's the problem. Sin gets you into trouble. And because you have sinned, that means you are also in trouble with God too. You see that? That's you down below. Because when you die, you will see the Almighty God who actually created you. And God will see your sin. All the stuff that you've ever done wrong. And you will be in trouble with Him. Remember, sin is not allowed in heaven. That's God's rule, and he makes the rules. So since you have sinned, that means you will not be allowed in heaven when you die. That means you will be stuck below in hell forever. And that makes God sad, because he doesn't want you to be stuck down there. So let me ask you a question. Where do you want to go when you die? Do you want to be stuck down below? Or do you want to be in heaven with God above? Do me a favor, point to your screen right now. Put your finger on the screen right now where you want to be. Do you want to be up with God? Then point to the top of your screen. Or do you want to stay stuck down below without God? Then point to the bottom of your screen. Are you pointing? Now, if you pointed to heaven, if you pointed to the top of your screen, if you pointed that you want to be with God, then you need to listen very closely because God did an amazing thing for you to save you 
and help you get unstuck from down below. God, the creator of all things, came down to earth to save you. People call God in the flesh Jesus Christ, and he would die on a cross for you. When God first came down, he was only a little baby, and that's the story of Christmas with baby Jesus in the manger. But Jesus grew up and became older. Baby Jesus grew up to become a man, and he died on a cross for you. And when he died on that cross, do you know what he did? Do you know what he did specifically for you? Watch your screen closely. He took your sin, the bad stuff that you do wrong, he took your sin and he died with it. And not only did Jesus die with your sin, he also removed it from himself to get rid of it and left it down below where sin belongs. And here's the cool thing. This is the coolest thing. Three days later, Jesus rose again from the dead. Jesus was once dead and buried, but now he's alive. And he's in heaven right now watching you. He's in heaven where there is no sin. And Jesus wants to offer life to you. Jesus wants to rescue you from hell. He wants to save you from where you are or where you're going to be and bring you up into heaven. He doesn't want you to be stuck down below. So if you want to be with Jesus when you die, you need to talk to him today. And he needs to hear a few things from you. A few things like this, like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Jesus, for my sin that you do not like. Thank you. Thank you for dying on a cross for my sin. Forgive me. Forgive me for the things that I have done wrong. Save me. Save me from hell because I don't want to be stuck there. Help me. Help me to be a better person. See, what God wants of you is to, first and foremost, trust in Jesus. He wants you to know this story on this screen and know it well. And God also wants you to obey Jesus. That means go to church, read your Bible, pray to Jesus, do all these things and, and become more like Christ. Now at this point we're going to be pausing in the video and the second part of the video is going to come on your screen and this part is going to be silent. And what I want you to do is use your child that's sitting on your lap and prompt your child to tell you what's going on in the story. And now you can tell the comprehension level of the child and know how much do they understand. So again, this part's silent. And I want your child or the, ch the child that's on your lap to speak to me and tell you what the story is about. And it starts off with nothing.
So there you go. That is the, the gospel message as best as I could tell it in visual form. Again, if you have any suggestions on how to make this better or adjustments that you might suggest, just put them down below in the comment section. And remember, you can watch this video over and over and over again as many times as you need to. But the main thing is that, that double check at the end, their comprehension level. And you may just be surprised at how much your little one actually remembers as you go through this story with them. And don't get caught up leaving legalistically by having them to say the exact same wording or something else like that. As long as they get the gist of it, they get the, the generalistic idea of it, um, not the exact specific wording. Again, God's the one that reads the heart, and I pray that this may be a valuable tool for you. Thanks for listening, and please, like I said before, pass it on.